every tribe had a flag and the flag was unique in color and the symbol that was uh, on it it was either an animal or some object that that would describe the tribe those who encamp to the front at the east shall be the banner of the camp of Yehuda. So on the east we have the tribe of Yehuda at the head of the three tribes and together with him are Yisachar Zevulun. So on the east we have Yehuda, Yisachar and Zevulun but they're all called the banner, the flag of Yehuda. Now, verse. Now, the total for all three tribes is given, and that is 186,400. We turn to page 735, the south, southern part, the side of the tabernacle. It's called the banner of the camp of Reuven, and together with him, we have Reuven, Shimon, and Gad. Reuven is the leader. Of the southern side and the total for them is 151,450 now verse 17 what's in the middle the tent of meeting and the camp of the Levites shall journey in the middle of the camp okay now verse 18 the western side the banner of the camp of Ephraim and on that side we have Ephraim, Minashe, and Binyamin, and the, which are all the sons of Rachel. <coughs> and the total is given for them, and that is 108,100. And now the northern side, the banner of the camp of Dan, and on the north we have three tribes, Dan, Asher, and Naphtali, with Dan being their leader. And the total is given in verse 30, 157,600. Now we turn to page 737. Chapter 3. Now we speak about uh, the Kohanim and Levim. These are the offspring of Aharon and Moshe on the day Hashem spoke with Moshe at Mount Sinai. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, Nadav, Avihu, Elazar, Itamar. Verse 4, Nadav and Avihu died, but Elazar and Itamar ministered during the lifetime of Aharon their father. Verse 5, Hashem spoke to Moshe saying, Bring near the tribe of Levi and have it stand before Aharon the Kohen and they shall serve him. So the tribe of Levi uh, has to be subservient to the Kohanim. They shall safeguard his charge, his command, and the charge of the entire assembly before the tent of meeting to perform the service of the tabernacle. Now we we'll turn to page 739. Verse 9, you shall present the Levites to Aaron and his sons. You shall appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall safeguard their priesthood. And the alien, anyone who is not a Kohen who approaches, will die. Now, verse 11, we read about uh, Levites, since they are doing the job in the tabernacle instead of the Jewish people who really were supposed to serve in the tabernacle also every family had to give up their firstborn to be the priest now the Levites are replacing the firstborn Hashem spoke to Moshe saying behold I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel in place of every firstborn For every firstborn is mine. On the day I struck down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, 
I sanctified every firstborn in Israel for myself. From man to beast, they shall be mine. I am Hashem. So here we learn that um, the, the tribe of Levi had to redeem the Jewish people. The firstborn of people and animals. Every Levite man, every Levi, replaced one firstborn. And uh, not all animals needed to be redeemed, but only donkeys. And one um, sheep could redeem um, many donkeys. Okay. Therefore, we need to first have the census of the Levites. And then we will compare that to the number of the firstborn of the Jewish people. And we'll see if there is enough. Hashem spoke to Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, verse 15, Count the sons of Levi according to their father's household. Every male from one month of age and up shall you count them. And here, surprisingly, the Levites are not counted from 20 years of age. Rather, the Levites are counted from one month of age. And the simple answer to this surprise is because for the Jewish people we counted able-bodied able men who could fight in the army. But for the Levites, they're not going to fight in the army. So we count every male. But under uh, one month of age, the the baby, we're not sure if he will survive. So we wait 30 days first, and only then we count him as a member of the nation. And that is why also the Pidiona Ben, redemption of the firstborn, happens after 30 days, to make sure that the baby is healthy. Now, Verse 17. These were the sons of Levi. Gershon, Kehat, and Merari. Levi had three sons, so we will count each one separately. Sons of Gershon, Livni, and Shimi. Sons of Kehat, Amram, Yitzhar, Hevron, Uziel. Sons of Merari, Machli, Umushi. Now, on page 741, we count um, the family of Gershon. And their count was 7,500 7, males. And they uh, encamped on the west of the tabernacle. Kehat, their total number of males is 8,600. And they encamped on the south. Merari had 6,200 men and they encamped on the north. And verse 32 tells us about the leader of the Levite leaders was Elazar, son of Aharon the Kohen. Now we turn to page 743. Um, to the east, before the tent of meeting, were Moshe, Aharon, and his sons. By the entrance to the, the tabernacle, Moshe with his family, Aharon with his family, and his two sons with their families. <coughs> now, if we make the count of um, Gershon, Kehat, and Merari, we're going to find... 22,300 Levite males. 22,300. However, um, in verse 39, it says, All the countings of the Levites, every male from one month of age and up, were 22,000. <coughs> Where's the extra 300? And the answer is... 
the extra 300 were firstborn boys. And over here, we need only the number of Levites who will replace the Jewish people's firstborn. But the Levite firstborn are themselves firstborn, and therefore they cannot replace uh, the Jewish firstborn. So we have only 22,000 Levites to work with. Now, let's count how many Jewish firstborn males there are. <coughs> Verse 40. Hashem said to Moshe, count every firstborn male of the children of Israel from one month of age and up. And take the Levites for me in place of every firstborn of the children of Israel. And they did that. Moshe counted as Hashem had commanded. Verse 43. Every firstborn male, according to the number of their names, from one month of age and up, according to their numbers, was 22,273. 22,273. Now there are 273 more firstborn Jews than the total number of Levites. Verse 44, Hashem spoke to Moshe saying, Take the Levites in place of every firstborn of the children of Israel and the livestock of the Levites in place of their livestock. And the Levites shall be mine. I am Hashem. And as for the redemptions of the 273 of the firstborn of the children of Israel, who are in excess of the Levites, what should we do with them? Hashem says, verse 47, You shall take five shekels each, according to the head count, in a sacred shekel, and you shall give the money to Aaron and his sons as redemption of the additional ones among them. Just like nowadays we redeem our firstborn boy from the Kohen for five silver coins, that's what those uh, firstborn males had to do because there were not enough Levites. Now, the question is, how do you select 273 people out of 22,273? Anyone that you approach and say, oh, you're extra, pay five coins. He'll say, why am I extra? I'm part of the original 22,000. Ask someone else. So Moshe invented a system. He took 22,273 pieces of parchment. And on 22,000 of them, he wrote Levi, Ben Levi. And on um, 273, he wrote five coins, five shekel. And he took all these uh, parchment pieces, mixed them up, and all the firstborn Jews had to go and pick out one. And if the one that they picked out had said Ben Levi on it, they were free to go because they were redeemed by a Levi. But those 273 that picked out five coins, uh, parchment, they had to pay because they were selected by lottery. <coughs> now, verse 49, Moshe took the money of the redemption from those who were in excess of the redemptions of the Levites. And the total money was... 1,365 shekels, because if you multiply 273 by 5, you'll get 1,365 uh, coins. And now, on page 745, chapter 4, we learn about the responsibilities of the children of Kehat, the family of Kehat, one of the three families of Levites. Hashem spoke to Moshe and Aaron, saying, Verse 3, From 30 years of age and up until 50 years of age, everyone who comes to the legion to perform work in the tent of meeting, 
count them. So now, additionally, we now need to count the Levites from 30 to 50 years old. Before, we counted them from one month until um, and up. Now we're counting from only 30 to 50. Here we learn that all the Levites of that age, between 30 and 50, did actual work in the um, temple. If they were younger or older, they could help out, but they couldn't do the main jobs. And that is because a man is the strongest between the ages of 30 and 50. Verse 4. This is the work of the sons of Kehat. Uh -huh. First, oh, the most holy. When the camp is to journey, Aharon and his sons shall come into the tabernacle, take down the partition curtain and the cover, the golden uh, cover of the Ark of the tes Testimony, I'm sorry, the, ar the cover of the Ark of the Testimony is the second partition because the tabernacle had two partitions, one to the entrance of the uh, Holy and the second one to the entrance of the Holy of Holies. And they shall cover it in a special Tachash hide covering and spread a cloth entirely of turquoise wool over it um, so what they did was they would take the the curtain put it over the ark and then put a second layer of uh, leather made from tahash hide over it and then they put a third layer of blue wool garment over it so that when the um, when the Levites carry it they should not touch and should not see the holy utensils and then verse 7 describes the same procedure for um, the table the Shulchan that they would cover it this time only with blue wool and then <clears throat> put on top um, red wool and then cover it with tahash hide. Verse 9 speaks about how they would wrap the menorah. They would wrap it with blue wool and then cover it with tahash hide. It would only have two covers. Now on page 747, uh, verse 11 describes how they would wrap the golden altar. They would cover it first with blue wool and then with tahash hide. They would take separately the utensils of the tabernacle and cover them also with blue wool and then tahash uh, skin. Then they will take. They would take uh, the outer altar and spread purple wool cloth over it, and then cover it with um, tahash uh, hide. <coughs> Verse fifteen: Aharon and his sons shall finish covering the holy um, utensils when the camp journeys, and then the sons of Kehat shall come to carry, so that they not touch the sanctuary, whatever is holy, and die. These are the bur burden of the sons of Kehat in the tent of meeting. Verse 16 describes the duties of Elazar, um, son of Aharon. The charge of Elazar, son of Aharon, the Kohen, is the oil of illumination, the incense, spices, the ketoret, the meal offering of the continual offering, 
the mincha, and the anointment oil. And plus, he is in charge of all other managers, the charge of the entire tabernacle and everything in it. In the last paragraph, we learn about the special precautions for the children of Kehat. Again, they would carry the most holy objects and they were not allowed to touch them directly or see them. Hashem spoke to Moshe and Aaron saying, Do not let the tribe of Kehat families be cut off from among the Levites. Thus shall you do for them so that they shall live and not die when they approach the Holy of Holies. Aaron and his sons shall come and assign them every man to his work and his burden. But they, the children of Kehat, shall not come and look as the holy utensils are inserted into their coverings, lest they die. This concludes Parshat Bamidbar. Um, now, let me address some of the questions that were asked on the chat. Um, okay, someone is asking, If someone asks us how much we earn, we said that it's better not to brag, not to hurt anyone. And if uh, you can get away with it, lower your accomplishments, diminish them, um, and say you're earning less. So someone is asking, um, but isn't it dangerous that if you say that you're earning less, Hashem will say, oh, you're saying you're earning less, so I'm going to give you less. And that is not a danger because you know that you are doing it for a good reason. You're doing it in order to protect the person from jealousy. You're doing it in order to protect yourself from Ainara. You're doing it in order to protect yourself from the danger of arrogance look at me, I'm earning so much. And therefore, since you have good intentions, you will be protected. Now, someone is asking, are we allowed to be proud of our accomplishments if Hashem controls our success? That's a very good question. And the answer is, of course, not. We can feel good and and thank Hashem for giving us the opportunity to have such successes, but we cannot be proud and arrogant um, because of our successes. We have to be humble, thank Hashem for the good fortune, and realize that it's only up to Hashem that we got it. Not because, our own, because of our own efforts. We can put the same effort into it and achieve less. And we can put the same effort into it and achieve more. And in fact, there are many doctors in the world. And some are more wealthy and some are less wealthy. Not because one uh, is a better businessman or better doctor. You can have a good doctor earning less. Maybe he's more honest. Or uh, you can have many lawyers. Some earn a lot, some not so much. Businessmen, in every area, you have people who are wealthy and not so wealthy. So it's not your education, not your effort, not your wisdom that gives you the, the final result. Um, now, how does that fit, fit with free will? And again, our free will is to choose what is the right uh, thing to choose. That's it. I'm choosing this. Our free will is not to accomplish it. We have to choose it, commit to it, and try it. Try to do it. 
the result is going to be up to Hashem. Not only that, it says a person cannot lift up his finger without Hashem allowing it. Um, which means, when I'm putting my effort in, and that's, um, we'll answer the next question, why do we need to put in effort if Hashem determines our success? <coughs> when I'm putting in the effort, whose energy am I using? I'm not using my own energy because I don't have energy. All I have is the soul that's put into my body. Hashem created the body. Hashem gives energy to the body. Hashem gives ability to my muscles to function. And all I really am is a thought in God's mind. And my soul can desire to do something. And God has to give his stamp of approval for me to be able to pick up my finger. Therefore, when I'm putting that effort and I feel my muscles bulging and I feel exhausted, we should not uh, get scared because the energy is not mine. In fact, when a person is worried, oh, my energy is uh, being used up, I'm getting tired, he's going to get tired fast. But when a person says, no, I have to accomplish this great thing, I cannot get tired. Hashem, please give me more energy. He gets more energy and he can run for miles and miles and he can work uh, from dawn to dusk. So where does the energy come from? Not from the body, but rather from spirit. Um, so at the end of the day, from us comes the decision and from Hashem comes the accomplishment. Um, we should all have um, a happy and healthy uh, Yom Tov of Shavuot, Chag Sameach and Shabbat Shalom.